Hello beautiful people and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel if you guys are new here My name is Gianna Leanne and I'm here with a combined little video for you guys I'm gonna be giving you guys my ultimate fall book recommendations along with what I'm looking to read this fall I've compiled so many recommendations so many books that I'm interested in reading and I kind of just wanted to give it all to you guys I was gonna do two separate videos, but I was like, you know what you can find both in one place best of both worlds, right? Some of the books on the TBR I do have physically, other ones I am going to pick up very very soon. I do have a cozy little fall book shopping video coming out to you guys, so right now I don't have them. And yeah, hopefully you guys will be able to add some of these to your TBR. I'm very excited to share everything that I've been looking for and what I've already read and I know is good. And before we get into this video, please make sure you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already to join the family. I just woke up to us hitting 17,000 beautiful people and it just warms my heart, so I just want to say a big thank you. This family is growing so big and I can't wait to see where we get in the future. I'm so happy that I've not literally met, but I've met all you beautiful people. <laughs> We got our cozy little fall hoodie on, Chestnut Springs inspired, but let's get into my fall TBR. All the books that I'm looking to read or pick up this fall, like I said, I don't have majority of these, but I did compile about 15 that I have on a little tiny list. So the first one is Make Me a Mixtape by Jennifer Whiteford. This actually isn't supposed to release until early October, so... Once it does release, I will be having my hands on this book and I will be reading it, hopefully in an upcoming reading vlog, I don't know yet, but this one just screamed fall. It's literally described as a cozy fall romance, so that's how I knew this had to be added to the list because I'm looking for that Pinterest fall aesthetic, you know? If I can get that from my books, chef's kiss perfection but based on the description and what i've kind of gotten from it we basically have like a rock star romance almost except our main character ali gave up on her music career so she has a past in the rock star life aesthetic but she kind of gave up on it and now she just lives in brooklyn new york and she runs her aunt's cozy little cafe she lives a very very simple life but then another rock star comes bulldozing into her life and kind of shows her that there is still love for music and maybe for her not to give up on her dreams right away that's all i've kind of gotten from from it. Cute little fall romance. I love the cozy vibes. It's based in New York. New York in the fall time. Yes. A cozy little cafe. Yes. Absolutely just love. It's perfect. So I'm so excited for this book to release early October. Then we have the iconic one that I'm pretty sure everyone is pulling out for the fall season. The Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Lori Gilmore. Come on you guys. Look at the cover. Look at the name. It's just perfect. I don't even know anything about this book but the cover I knew already that I will be reading it for this fall. And when the opening line literally says a spicy small town romance. Come on, you guys. And the last line also says, The Pumpkin Spice Cafe is a cozy romantic mystery for fans of Gilmore Girls with a grumpy ex-sunshine dynamic, a small town setting with an HEA guaranteed. The tropes? It even listed the tropes. Are you kidding? Grumpy ex-sunshine, small town, found family, spicy. If you guys are not new here and you guys have been watching me for a while, that book seems perfectly up my alley, especially for a romance, especially with the tropes. I love a good found family moment. Small town I'm starting to get into more, and I just feel like I'm really, really going to enjoy this book. Let me know if you guys are picking this one up specifically also because it's so popular we have a new release from one of my favorite thriller psychological thriller authors Frida McFadden we have the boyfriend this is a newer release it's also coming out I'm pretty sure October 1st so we have a lot of good new releases coming out in the last stretch of the year and this one I'm personally so excited for I recently figured out that this was even coming out and I just got so excited when I saw it with Frida McFadden books I do like to go into them completely blind so I didn't even read the description on what this one was about her books are so fast paced and honestly the twistiest plots that I've read besides Riley Sager, but she's definitely up there. So this is a new release that I'm so excited to pick up for the fall season. I feel like any of Frida McFadden's books are perfect if you want a very spooky but twisty psychological thriller or even mystery. It's just perfect. Along with also The Inmate by Frida McFadden, I've heard so many good things about this one. We have like a prison setting and some secrets from the past that come back to haunt our main character going through this and with Frida McFadden's writing, we know it's gonna be twisty we know it's gonna blindside us and we're gonna have our jaws dropped on the floor it's just how it goes but I am personally really excited for this one because I've heard so many good things and lastly another thing to mention is I'm pretty sure all of Frida McFadden's books are available on Kindle Unlimited which is so convenient if you read one Frida McFadden book and you get sucked into her writing and you get addicted to her book they most likely are on Kindle Unlimited this one might not be completely fall coded but we have Daydream by Hannah Grace this is the third one in the Maple Hill series 
I'm pretty sure that's the title of it. I personally love this series and even though it's not completely fall vibes, it is a college slash university romance and I don't know why whenever I think of fall, I think of school. So that's why I put it on this TBR list and because I just love the characters, I love the writing and these books are normally pretty spicy. Hannah Grace just does something with her spice. I really, really enjoy it. The cover is absolutely gorgeous and I'm excited to see the next continuation of this series. I'm pretty sure Icebreaker was a five star. Wildfire, I'm pretty sure was like 4.5. So I'm really hoping that the third one obviously lives up to the hype or it's even better. This was a very interesting find. The Blonde Dies First by Joelle Wellington. This cover is intriguing enough. Tell me I'm wrong, you guys. I saw this at the bookstore actually and I'm pretty sure it did just release. And the cover just pulled me in so bad that I had to turn it around and I had to read what it was about. And this one is giving the perfect vibes if you love the Scream movies. I feel like this is just gonna be a really spooky but stupid kind of mystery vibe. I think it's gonna be really funny but also pretty gory. That's the vibes I'm getting from it. And Scream is just iconic enough during the fall time Halloween, you know. It's just the vibe we're going for and to find a book that's similar or relates to that could be perfect. Signed, Sealed, Dead by Cynthia Murphy. This is also a newer release. It's definitely giving Good Girl's Guide to Murder vibes because our main character, Paige, is also obsessed with true crime and like solving mysteries and stuff. So that automatically reminded me of Pip. And ultimately the plot of the book seems to be based in an eerie small hometown based in like a really, really old house and basically solving a cold case mystery, which hello, Good Girl Guide to Murder. And by an author I've never even heard of. So seems like I could enjoy the vibes based on just what it's about and the fact that it's small town and has like dark town secrets that get uncovered. Come on guys, come on. And I had to obviously give you guys a Kindle Unlimited recommendation. You guys already know. I haven't really done too much research on Kindle Unlimited rec specifically, but this one just caught my eye, especially the cover. It's Spookly Yours by Jennifer Chipman. <laughs> this one just seems like it's gonna be so silly, but it's just gonna be a nice brain rot read almost where it's just for the vibes, it's just for the humor. It's just kind of ridiculous to the point where it's it's enjoyable so I would kind of almost see this more as like a short story maybe because it's so short it's only a little bit over 200 pages but the description is what got me the most along with the cover it literally says spookily yours is a spicy open door Halloween themed novel featuring a witch and the demon who falls in love with her my cat is a demon no that's not a joke. An actual real life demon and he needs my help to break a curse. I don't know you guys. It's a Halloween coded book though so I feel like it's gonna be enjoyable and I haven't heard anyone talk about this book so I'm excited to pick it up for a quick little short story Halloween read. Maybe I'll even read this on Halloween night. I feel like the vibes could be there. This is one that I've just had my eye on and as soon as I saw the description I added it immediately to my list and it's on Kindle Unlimited. I can literally read it whenever I want on my Kindle. Oh and how could I freaking forget? Nothing like the movies by Lynn painter is the last one that I don't have physically that I want to read for the fall time season you guys better than the movies was one of the first books I read going all the way back to the start of my reading journey genuinely that book holds such a special spot in my heart and I'm just so excited to read more about Liz and Wes they are like I said very special characters to me it's a very special book to me and it's been so long overdue so if you love better than the movies you guys all better be picking this book up. Now for the five books that I own physically already that I do want to read during the fall time season. I realize this now that this TBR is absolutely massive. There is no way I'm going to finish all of these books, but in a perfect world, let's just pretend that I potentially could because all these books I really, really, really want to read. <laughs> First we have The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I've heard so many good things about this book, you guys. It's been floating around book talk for some time now. It's definitely not new. We've definitely all heard of this book, but I picked it up at the thrift store. It piqued my interest at the time because I saw it there and I haven't given Lucy Foley's writing a try, surprisingly. I remember I owned a few of her books and I might have unhauled those or like donated them. I don't really remember, but maybe I'll actually give her writing finally a try. I have heard from other people that this is just kind of a murder mystery, but it's told from so many different perspectives all on this apartment floor because they're trying to figure out the mystery that went on on this floor specifically so you're following the POV of a bunch of different people and everyone can almost be a suspect. I love books like that especially if we're jumping between POVs and getting each person's side of the story and like what they're hiding you know. I'm always down for that so super excited about this one. I know I'm so late to the hype of it but Better late than never, right? <laughs> we also have The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. Hinton? Why have I not read this book, you guys? I haven't seen the movie or whatever adaptation it is for it. I, I've been living under a rock, basically, is the moral of the story. 
So we're gonna maybe read it during the fall time season. It's super short. I feel like I just need to. I still cannot believe that I haven't read it. Like, I'm kicking myself for it now because of how iconic this is. But it says, a heroic story of friendship and belonging. Seems like we have like some gang things going on. Lots of friendship aspects and how important friendship is. No one ever said life is easy, but Pony Boy is pretty sure he's got things figured out. I don't know. I'm here for it. I'm super excited. It's so short, so I know I can just fly through it as a cozy little fall read. Sticking with the short read, we have Pizza Girl by Jean Koyon Frazier. I don't know how to pronounce this author's name, you guys, but I've had this for a little bit of time, and it is just more of a fiction read, I'm pretty sure. As soon as I read what this was about, I just knew it was gonna be something that I might enjoy. It's based on a struggling mom trying to find her way back into the swing of things, because after giving birth and being so young, she feels like her life's just kind of falling apart, so I feel like it's really gonna go into the hardship of struggling, and learning how to live struggling, and move forward from it, and grow from it, and ultimately still be moving forward no matter what comes in your path. So, super excited and again, such a short read. We have How to Kill a Guy in 10 Ways by Eve Kelman. I've been telling you guys I've been wanting to read this book for so long and I feel like now that it is officially fall time, I feel like I have no excuse anymore and I just need to read it. It seems so intriguing. Tell me this title doesn't make you want to read the book. And even like the knife on the back. I've explained this book so many times to you guys, but genuinely I feel like the title speaks for itself. So, at this point, I'm just gonna stop telling you guys and just read it and then I can finally give you guys my thoughts and opinions and my rating on it. And lastly, another book that I've had on here for absolutely way too long. I'm pretty sure it's pushing now two years. Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. Lisa Jewell is such a loved author by so many people and I still have not read a single book by her. Tell me why. I, I don't know why. Try to convince me. Because this book out of all of her books is the one that has intrigued me the most. We have the mother-daughter aspect of a heartbroken mother looking for her missing child. She doesn't know what happened to the child. She doesn't know if she's alive, if she's dead. Like, she doesn't know. And then she meets someone that has a daughter that looks identical to her missing daughter. Hello, tell me that's not intriguing. So I don't know why I still haven't read this book. Maybe this fall season I will actually end up getting around to it and reading it and maybe even loving it. So those are all the books on my fall TBR. All the books that I've had my eye on that I want to pick up, that I want to read, that I already have, like that is what I plan to be reading this fall season. Now we're going to be going into all the fall book recommendations that I have read that I want to share with you guys. We have three different categories. Yes, I organized it and I made it specific so then you guys can basically try to find a rec for anything you're kind of looking for. I tried to make a pretty good variety of what you guys could want, like some romance, some thrillers, some just fiction. I tried to keep it broad. The first category I just wanted to jump into two authors that I've briefly already mentioned that I truly recommend any book on their backlist could be a potential perfect fall read. I'm making my way through both of these authors backlists so I haven't been too disappointed in any of their books yet except for maybe one or two that I've read. So the first author is obviously Riley Sager. You guys know I love him as an author. Recently I've been binging all of his books on his backlist and I've gotten pretty far. There's only his new release, Middle of the Night, if you guys watch that reading vlog, that I personally did not like I've never rated a Riley Sager book that low in my life So that's the only one I've read out of his backlist that I personally don't like but for the ones that I do really really recommend to you guys We have final girls by Riley Sager This one I feel like is the perfect fall coded book because it is based in a big city during the fall time Like that gloomy gloomy season and just the mystery that goes on in it The main crime is a spooky cabin in the woods with a friend group that screams fall, right? So this is the one that I would highly recommend you to start with if you haven't read a Riley Sager Sager book or if you're just looking for one during the fall time. Along with Survive the Night, this was the first Riley Sager book I read. I really, really enjoyed it. The whole book is basically told in one car ride, like one night. He didn't get me on this ending, neither did any of his other books, so I'd recommend this one as well. And I also read The Only One Left by Him as well. I really enjoyed that. Just the whole story of that book was really, really good. Definitely some of my favorite writing I've ever read by Riley Sager. If you're looking for your jaw to be dropped, that one is definitely one I would recommend. And then the last author, which I've talked about a lot in this video already is Frida McFadden. All of her books are on Kindle Unlimited. They're easily bingeable and I feel like none of her books are really over 350 pages. They're definitely not 400. So if you're looking for that fast paced shorter read, she's the author for you. And I highly recommend her if you are in a slump. Now we're going to get into some standalones that I would recommend to you guys. These ones are just kind of random. I'll try to explain my reasoning on why I put them on a fall TBR list, but some of them I just can't tell you why it reminds me of fall. 
But the first three books that I have are definitely the cult vibes. I don't know why, but like Halloween time, fall time, I'm, I'm getting cult. It's giving cult. So the first iconic one is Bunny by Mona Awad. I don't even know what to think of this book, you guys. It's a mixture between horror and I don't even know. It's like a girl group, but they're like all in a really big cult and how they talk to each other is, you look beautiful today, Bunny. Thank you, Bunny. How are you, Bunny? What happened, Bunny? You will get so fed up with the writing sometimes, or at least I did, but I just was so mind blown when I was reading this book because I had no idea where it was trying to go. I had no idea what was supposed to be happening in the book and that's what made it so fun. If you're looking for a culty horror book, this is the one. <laughs> Along with The Honeys by Ryan de la Sala, Ryan la Sala. I just love this cover. It's probably one of the most beautiful books I own. But this was also giving cult too, but kind of in a summer camp vibe instead though. But the cult is The Honeys at this very a strange summer camp. And I don't even know. Thinking back on this book, I can't tell you what it's about because I was confused the whole time, but it's definitely giving the cult vibe. And lastly, in the cult vibe section, Under the Influence by Noelle Crooks. This one's giving cult, but not outright in your face cult. Secretly, there's definitely a cult going on, but no one can really say anything about it or no one has fully realized it. And this book was just kind of whack as a whole. It's very, very modern. So if you don't like super modern books, I would avoid this one. But if you do, it's a good one. And there's also a lot of different formats of writing in this. Like there's emails, there's text messages, there's like party invitations. There's a whole bunch of things going on and it just kept me on my toes. I wanted to know what was going on. There's a lot of unlikable characters in this, but that's what makes the book so intriguing because you want to know, oh, wow. Wow, what's gonna happen to that character? Kind of a random romance thrown in here, but Too Late by Colleen Hoover. I really enjoyed this Coho book. I say it all the time, but if you literally covered her name, you would have no idea that this is a Colleen Hoover book. At least that's how I felt about it. It is a very toxic college romance type vibe. Again, don't know why I associate college and school with fall. It just happens. But because it's a toxic, darker romance, it's just kind of those gloomy vibes that you want to curl up with a toxic romance, you know? A book that I just read recently, Dishonestly Yours by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This is a new series that they just came out with and I was not expecting this to be as fall coded as it is. But first of all, we follow con artists and a family of con artists, they con people for a living. So we're following the two best friends that are trying to run away and get away from that life. So they end up running away to a super small town, very small town. And when they're at that small town, it's based in the fall time. So they're going to fall festivals. They have the fall weather. You have the small town secrets during the spooky season. And even one part of the book was on Halloween night. So perfect fall vibes and I rated this book really high. I annotated it. It was just a really good time. Fit to Die by Daniel Kala was another really surprising read of mine. I really, really enjoyed the plot of this. It's not something you normally see from the books that become really popular on Book Talk and BookTube and in the book community. So when I picked this up randomly, I was definitely iffy because I haven't heard anyone talk about it. But after reading it, I was genuinely pretty shocked. It follows so many different POVs and sometimes it can get really confusing if you're not paying attention because it doesn't outright say who we're following you just kind of have to read the first paragraph and guess or piece it together yourself But I really liked that surprisingly which by the way the end in the mystery It will have you shocked It was just such a good read and I feel like this book is definitely not talked about enough Also another kind of random one the midnight library by Matt Haig I've also read this book so long ago and I still think about it all the time So if you want more of a fiction book that's kind of more serious and it's not brain rot or you're not trying to figure out a mystery I would recommend this one because personally for me when I was reading this I learned a lot of life lessons lessons from this book surprisingly. The writing was just really really amazing and you really get to know the character after following her around for so long and you really get to know why she's making the decisions that she's making because this secret library basically each book is giving her a different path of a choice that she could have made. She's basically jumping through these books of what her life would have been like if she chose that book or that path instead of another path. So I don't know I learned so much from this book and I know it's pretty popular but I still would recommend it to you guys to give it a try. A pretty iconic one but the silent patient by Alex Mike Michaelides I can't pronounce this author's name, but this is definitely one of those thrillers that I still think about all the time. And another thriller that if you want to feel really silly by the end of it, like for me, the twist was right in front of my face the whole entire time, literally the whole entire time. And I didn't guess it at the last page when they revealed it. I was like, wow, I feel so absolutely silly because this was in front of my face the whole entire time. 
So I highly recommend this. I know it's so popular, but if you are just maybe getting into thrillers or you are dipping your toes in psychological thrillers, I definitely would recommend this one. You will binge it. And lastly, really quickly, I just wanted to go through all the series that I would recommend to you guys. I read a lot of book series. Some of these I am in the middle of. Some of these I finish. It's just all the series that I've been picking up that are fall coded. Wow, how many times has Gianna said fall in this video? You guys should take a shot every single time I said fall. Fall vibes, fall coded. <laughs> The first one I love so, so, so very, very much. We have the Finley Donovan series, you guys. I've read all the books that have come out in this series so far. We have four of them currently out. There's a fifth one on its way. I can't believe we're still continuing the series, but we are. And the characters are everything for me. If you are looking for a cozy mystery series that has a lot of dark humor, has two characters, Finley and Barrow, that you will absolutely fall in love with, lots of found family, and just some really, really, really silly things that they get themselves up to and have to kind of escape from or cover up. This is a series for you. The books are pretty short and I feel like the writing is really easy to read and binge. You don't really have to be thinking too much while you're reading. So this series will always be so close to my heart. Along with one I briefly already mentioned, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series by Holly Jackson. I love this series, you guys. I can't believe it's done. I do kind of want to reread these. That could be the vibe, you know? This one is the perfect YA murder mystery trilogy. I guess it is a trilogy. With Hip solving all these mysteries and cold cases, I felt like I was a detective with her. I felt completely immersed into the book and that I was Pip's like sidekick, solving everything with her. And I feel like each book just gets kind of crazier and crazier and it advances and there's just so much growth throughout the series that I can't say enough good things about it to be honest. I'd say overall it is like a five star series of mine. We also have the Butcher and Blackbird trilogy. I forget what the actual name of it is but I did read Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver out of it. I do want to pick up the second one soon and the third one isn't out yet but this one I would recommend to you guys. It's definitely for a specific taste is how I'm gonna put it because it's very gory. The spice in it is very different for sure but I love the plot. I love all the details that were added into this book. Not only was it extremely gory, that part was definitely detailed, but it was just kind of the backstory behind the crimes that they were committing and just every single detail that went into it that I just really enjoy. So highly recommend, but read it at your own risk. I can only really recommend the first one out of the trilogy to you guys, but I am planning on reading the second one this fall season. Another one that I'm not completely done, we have There Are No Saints by Sophie Lark. This is a duet. I did read this one. It's a darker romance. I read this in a day which honestly surprised me because I wasn't really that into it, but I mean, I must have been to completely binge it in a day. Again, very specific. The spice in this was for a particular taste is how I want to put this because the spice I read is very cringy and like rom com -y, but this spice is a lot darker. It's creative. Let's just say that. I really enjoyed the whole setup of this book though. The characters intrigued me. We have two serial killers basically hunting down someone. It's very interesting. I have to read the second one in the series, but from the first one, I know I'm definitely interested enough to pick up the second one, which is There Is No Devil, I'm pretty sure. Both of these are on Kindle Unlimited. If you want to be sobbing this fall season, I would recommend the If He Had Been With Me duet, If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan, and If Only I Had Told Her by Laura Nolan. <sighs> I read this one last fall, I'm pretty sure, and then I read this one right when it released in the summertime. And let's just say, if you wanna cry, pick up these books. Not only are you gonna cry, you're gonna be heartbroken. I did cry, but not as much as I thought I was going to. But even with that being said, I still felt so broken inside after finishing this because I got so attached to these characters and just the buildup of the events that happened when everything did unfold, I was heartbroken on the floor sobbing. So they're very hyped up, they're very, very popular, but I personally don't think they're too overhyped. And so Surprisingly, I also liked this one better than I liked this one. I wasn't expecting that, but you gotta read both of them. If you've only read one, you gotta read the other. It's just how it has to happen. And the last series that I have is a pretty big series. I'm not even close to being done it, but it is the Devil's Night series. This is perfectly fall coded, you guys. It is, I'm pretty sure is it high school? I don't think it's high school. If it's high school, they're, they're crazy for high schoolers. Either way, it is like more of that school romance. Very, very dark romance. Like this is definitely a series that I think I would have to give to number one of the most effed up series I've ever read in my life. I don't know how Penelope Douglas puts the things she puts in her books. I don't know how she comes up with it. I just, it blows my mind. So if you're looking for a really, really dark romance, a very big series of characters that you're gonna fall in love with, I highly would recommend this series as a whole. I am on the third book, Kill Switch, still since like June. I don't know why I'm stuck on that book, but if I can push through that one, I feel like I'm gonna breeze through the other two books in the series, but I can say from the first two that I've read, I really, really enjoy them. Like I said, they're extremely up.
But those are all the book recommendations that I have for fall for you guys along with my fall TBR. We talked about a lot of books. I'm sorry I talked your ear off, but I just had to, you guys. I couldn't gatekeep these. I just had to share. I had to talk. I had to rant. And hopefully you guys got something out of it. Maybe you will read the same books as me this fall and maybe we can chat about it in the comments if I do end up reading them. Or even if you have read any of these ones that I'm looking to read, let me know your opinions. I would love to know what you thought. Maybe some warnings. You guys always give me some heads ups or, oh, just in case you didn't know about this book, you know, I love that and I read every single one of them. Let me know absolutely anything down below. And I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff you guys know how to do. Don't forget to check out my Patreon down below. You don't want to miss out on all the things they get to see over there. But other than that, I really hope you guys are having an amazing, wonderful day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! I've been stranded so perfectly fall coated. One, two, three, four, five. What am I forgetting? I tried. I tried to make a. Um. Where's my? Oh, I'm sweating so bad.